So I'm here to share something called Valley of the Sunflowers. First I'm going to explain what it is, then I'll show you how we did it, and then I'll uh, share with you why I think it's awesome, and why a lot of people think it's awesome. I'm an industrial engineer, an urban planning wonk, and a transportation expert in downtown Phoenix. I'm also one of the three project managers for this. In the middle, I, I'm also project managers with Braden Kay in the middle here, and then Kenny Barrett on your left. Um, and take a, take a notice, too, of the land behind us because that, um, the Valley of the Sunflowers is a two-season project on two acres of land, vacant land, in downtown Phoenix that look just like that land right behind us. Think about two football fields side by side. And on that, we've planted a sea of sunflowers. Then we harvest those sunflowers, press them for oil, and give that to the Phoenix Union Bioscience High School students to convert to biodiesel for them to put into their hybrid solar biofuel vehicle that they are designing and fabricating from scratch. They are, they, that is, it's an impressive school. Um, the partners doing this, Roosevelt Row, the high school that I mentioned, then Intel. And we are, we finished season one in December and we're in the middle of season two right now. So that's the what. But here's the house. So the land, as you saw, was started with debris and gravel all over. So first we had to scrape all that up and actually uncover the soil. Then we watered it to soften it up and then prepared it for the actual planting and the rest of the, the project. Community volunteers were essential to this. And here you see Kenny training dozens of the high school students to plant what are going to be hundred, or tens of thousands of seeds in the field for season one. The high school students planted most of season one and the community volunteers have planted most of season two. And then we got the sprouts. So what we didn't realize when the sprouts came is that when they're small and itty bitty, they're really sugary. Once they get a little bigger, they're starchy. But when they're small and itty bitty and sugary, it tur turns out that people that really love them or the things that really love them are pigeons and doves. <laughs> so we had a problem with that. And so we had to use the straw. If you take the beds end to end, it's three miles. So we basically laid three miles of straw to cover up the sprouts while they were small and sugary so that the birds wouldn't necessarily find them until they were larger and starchy. Finally, we got the blooms about two months later, so the straw worked. And it was really exciting to see people in the field enjoying it passively or actively through, uh, uh, we saw senior photos and wedding shoots. Kenny saw a music video going on, but eventually we had to harvest them. So that party ended for season one. We had to harvest them, we chopped them down, we hung up the heads to dry, we composted the leaves and saved the stalks to create biochar later. The next steps are to get the oil press in from Wisconsin um, so we can press the seeds from season one. And then also we're waiting expectantly for season two to bloom. Um, we planted about seven weeks ago and in about a month we're expecting some yellow to pop up for season two. But what I, what's great about this is that different people love it for different reasons. Kenny, who is the programs manager for Roosevelt Row, he loves how creativity and artistic intervention has built community and how it helps the surrounding businesses and brings literally life to these vacant fields. Braden, who's, an a, who's a PhD student in ASU School of Sustainability, likes the educational aspect and how it's pushing us to have a discussion about sustainability here in the Valley. And the reason I like this project is because it pushes my goal of making downtown more walkable. It basically supplants 90,000 square feet of blight with something that is enjoyable to walk past and people are even coming into downtown to explore it. But there are a lot of reasons that people are going to like this. Um, we found that some people like to get their hands dirty, some people just like to romp around, and others like the unique photo opportunities. Um, these are, those are some of my favorite pictures right there. I saved them for that one. Often people ask how I got tied into this, and <laughs> as is often the case with me, it happened over dark and stormies. Um, I basically found some grant opportunities and asked Kenny to meet me at the room bar for, so I could pick his brain for some ideas. He came up with the Valley of the Sunflowers, and the rest you saw was history. Roosevelt Row then helped connect us with a lot of connections with the city of Phoenix, um, Sycamore Farms, and some construction companies, Hensel Phelps and DPR. U of A, and from there, we did the project. But the real punchline here is that I want to see more projects like this in Phoenix. I, want to, I know that there are ideas out there, probably in this audience, that are exciting but have not been pursued before. I'm encouraged that if that describes you, I encourage you to find people that have that same vision. Go out there, dream big, find the grants, and make it happen. 
And if you think the idea is too crazy or too outlandish, just please look at the Valley of Sunflowers and realize that's okay. <laughs>